Hello, dear viewers. Welcome to Let's Play Dungeon Crawl Stone Soup. We're returning to Granite Grant. And I forget exactly what we were doing with him. Uh, hang on. That's right. We have a couple of runes here. The Decaying Rune from the Swamp and the Serpentine Rune from the Snake Pit. Which means, I guess, that we're going back to the vaults. Hmm. Yeah, we don't really have the... Oh, that's not the right screen. There we go. We don't really have the artifacts to tackle the slime pits. Uh, I mean, we have good equipment, but with the current, uh, current patch, 0.14, if you don't have mostly artifact equipment. I mean, if you can really only have a couple of slots that aren't artifacts or uh, to be worth doing the slime pits uh, because your equipment gets degraded very rapidly. Oh, do I really want to be doing... No, we're going to backtrack here. Um, kill this worm. Hopefully it gives us some food. No, shucks. Um, because I realized that I didn't bother to do any stash work last time when I signed off. Let me see. We need to drop Scroll of Recharging and Amnesia and Enchant Weapon. These are all things that I, you know, I, I'm not inclined to use on the fly. Oh, we have a couple of scrolls of Brand Weapon. That's interesting. What is this scroll here? Holy Silence or Torment. Okay, so... Not even worth experimenting on yet. Um, let's see. Let's drop some of these wands that we're not using, uh, such as this wand of fireball and this wand of cold. And one of these wands of digging. We don't need to be carrying two around. This is the part of the game where we do start to stack up on inventory stuff. Although... It seems to be not as bad with this character. Maybe that's just because we're going through a lot of consumables. That's probably it, actually. Uh, drop this demon blade. It's not like we're ever going to use it, but... Still holding off on using this mace. Not because it's cursed, because that doesn't really matter all that much. But because... Well, I suppose we're probably at the point where we can... Stop using protection. Hmm. I don't really want to rebrand this flail, particularly. I mean, it's 8-4, which is a good good enchantment, but, uh, you know, a morning star or an evening star with even minimal enchantment would be better for us than this flail. I mean, just the base damage is so much higher that... Uh, you know, it's, it's not worth using a scroll of branding. Uh, so we may switch over to this mace here. Let's, um, hmm. Let's see. What does our armor class look like wielding this mace? 38 with 22 evasion. That's reasonable. I liked 43 a lot better than 38. We are going to be doing a lot more damage, though, this way. And at this point, it's pretty probably worth it. We're also a lot more likely to hit. And it does let us go invisible. Not really. 71% failure rate. Invisibility is one of those things that isn't really good right now, I don't think. Maybe it will be in 0.15. I don't know. And I'm sure that it's more useful than I give it credit for, but hmm, what do we have here? Amulet of Faith, Stasis... Oh, that clarity amulet that prevents us from casting. Yeah, that that was a that was a real disappointment. That was a cool amulet prior to the discovery that I couldn't cast any spells with it. Uh, let's eat a honeycomb just so it stops annoying us here with its warning that we're hungry. We don't have any identification scrolls. That's a little odd. I guess we have most of our potions identified, so it's really not that bad. We haven't found a straight-up amulet of any of those things. I, I do have to correct myself, by the way. I, in a previous video, I, I 
mentioned that warding did something that was incorrect. What it actually does is it gives you a pip of negative energy resistance and provides you with defense against attacks from summoned creatures. I don't know if it gives you armor class or evasion or resistance or what, maybe all of the above. But I, I thought that it abjured them somehow, but it does not. It just gives you resistances. Okay, uh, yeah, I think... I think we're okay with getting rid of this flail. I may regret that, but I, I just I feel like defensively we're we're quite capable at this point. A shield of protection. I uh, I just don't want to put ten levels into shields to make that usable. Not until our spell casting is really solid, and by really solid I mean we need more offensive capability than just iron shot and bolt of magma. I've probably not been using petrify enough. That's probably a, a reasonable ability to be using. Oh, and we have Stone Skin and Phase Shift that I haven't been using either. So we, we are defensively fine, I think. Do we have extra remove curse scrolls? Yeah, let's... Well, there's really n no need whatsoever to, to uncurse this mace prior to finding a new weapon. So that's fine. Still want the resist magic cloak. We don't really have a, another good source of it yet, outside of something. Our helmet? No, the other source is just our natural resistance. Okay. We still have this wild magic business, which is kind of cool, I guess. It means we're delayed a little bit in reaching our late game power, but once we hit it, it's going to be even more powerful than normal. We. Uh, there, there, will, there will be a slight delay to get those spells castable, followed by a shorter delay in getting them really super powerful. What books do we have? Uh, well, we definitely want to drop the Book of the Sky. We're not going to be learning anything from there anytime soon. We have four spell levels left. So, hmm. Anything want to memorize that we can currently memorize? I don't think so. Yeah, it doesn't look like it. Is there anything that we want to memorize specifically from the Book of Power? I suppose this Orb of Destruction would be great once we get to that point. It's just a very strong, long-range spell. Though it's it's very slow. It's, it's dodgeable by the intelligent enemy. I suppose, how close are we actually to all of this happening? We'd need one more level in spellcasting and one more experience level or two more levels in spellcasting. Yeah, it's worth carrying the book with us. I don't want to trek all the way back here just to memorize Orb of Destruction. So, back to the vaults. If you notice that artifact shield, I think I mentioned in the first video, it lets you go berserk, which is forbidden by Chabriados to even... It's forbidden for us to even wield it. Or we will be put under penance. Which involves being put to sleep, being slowed. Stuff that you would expect from the Snail God. Potion of Mutation. Potions of Mutation can be useful to you. They're not just, you know, worthless. They're just very, very situational. Uh, they're, they're reasonable if you have um, a ton of negative mutations, because the more mutations you have, the higher the chance there is that um, the potion of mut or the, the instead of receiving a new mutation, you will have one of your old root mutations removed. Uh, I don't think these guys can actually hurt us, so... I guess they can a little. Not enough that we need to... I, I mean, Harpies will instantly be killed by Slouch. Gosh, Deflect Missile's still at 12%. Um, you know, I think that's fine. The miscast chance is... The miscast penalty is still pretty bad, but I'm just sick of putting points into charms when we aren't using it for anything else. Just sick of it. 
we could be putting it into something like fire magic, something cool, something damaging, something offensive. Um, hmm. Though, really, the smart thing would be to do something like this. We don't have any endgame fire magic yet, so there's no real reason to level that up anyway. I mean, I could put more points into shields with the anticipation of acquiring a, a heftier shield. I mean, I already have a better shield. Question is, is that better than getting our base defensive stats up? Hmm. The, the balancing test is whether it's better to have a shield or better to have a two-handed weapon, I think. And the only two-handed weapons in Maces and Flails are the Great Maces, which are very strong offensively. But, I mean, we're not going to be beating things to death if we can help it eventually. So by the time we get another six points in Maces and Flails that that would require, yeah, let's, let's go ahead and train shields up. We have a positive aptitude for it, is one of the reasons why I'm making this decision. Uh, we don't have any spell schools that we really want to work on right now. I mean, none of our spells are... Mm. Yeah, I think this is fine. We haven't found Firestorm yet. If we'd found Firestorm... I would start training fire magic, but we have not. Ugh, gross, a cursed skull. Well, at least we're somewhat resistant to torment. Ugh, gross. Uh, good, fire giant zombie. Fire giant zombie, not nearly as scary as fire giant. For obvious reasons. Well, maybe they're not obvious. The zombies don't have any of the special abilities of the uh, original, so they can't set you on fire, they can't cast fireball at you, they're not wielding a weapon, etc., etc. Crypt is actually a reasonable option, I think. If we find another source of negative energy resistance, then it's an option. Hello, Boulder Beetle. Boulder Beetles are pretty easy for us to kill. Even if they hit us full on, they're not going to do just too terribly much damage, unless we're fighting something else, which... Hopefully, if we're fighting something else, we have the presence of mind to dodge the beetle or ensure that it hits our enemy. Whoa! Jeez. That's a bunch of critters. Wonder where their access point is. Yeah, somewhere down here. Probably over there somewhere. There's a door. Let's get some allies. Nah, not the best allies, but we have deflect missiles. That's fine. Go after that Yaktar. Provide a meat shield for me. I really didn't need to do that, to be honest. Uh, I messed up that line of sight dodge there. Would have maintained line of sight no matter what. I like it that they're just trickling around the corner one at a time for us. It's very convenient. Uh, let's get some friends. Yeah, that's a pretty good summon. Hmm. <laughs> Unless they all die right away. See, this is where I do wish that I had a smite targeted ability. Situations exactly like this. Where I've got summons in between me and the enemies. Hmm. That's right, we have a Wand of Healing now. That's very good. I suppose we can use this time to, like, cast Phase Shift or something. It seems good. Eight additional evasion. Yeah, that's very good. I should be casting that at the start of more fights. 
And we can cast Regeneration. Will it survive two more turns? Yes. Eh, not quite. Deflect Missiles is also great because it can deflect Bolt spells, whereas um, Shields cannot block Bolts. They can only uh, block Beam-style spells. So it it's just a, a great extra line of defense against... Um... Okay. There we go. Got those guys out of the way. Hmm. I think I'm going to wait on casting any more spells. Glowing Great Mace, huh? How's our shields coming along? It's a little slow. It's fine, though. We're not really in any hurry to improve it. I mean, once it gets there, it'll be nice, but... We don't really care when it gets there. They're not going to close, are they? I can always use Temporal Distortion, but our Chabriados abilities cost mana. That's, that's one of the downsides of this hybrid build, as opposed to a pure fighter type. Uh, a non-spellcasting, like, evocations slash invocations build. Um... Aside from, you know, focusing your skills much more, I mean, imagine if we had none of these and all of those points were put into these two skills plus, you know, the skills we've already trained. Um, like, all of our skills would be around level 20 instead of around level 15, 10 or 15. You, you just have to spread yourself much thinner as a spellcaster unless you want to be really specific as a spellcaster, in which case you, you fall into a different kind of narrowness. I mean, if you have all conjurations, all you can do is make things go boom, you're going to die at some point. You're, you're not going to live long enough to... I mean, maybe, maybe not. I, I just... In my experience, uh, pure conjurers are um, not very long-lived. There may be a way around that. I need to be casting phase shift again. I really need to remember to use that spell basically every fight in here. I also should have checked out that great mace. Whoa! That great sword did a ton of damage. Let's, um, let's slouch and see what happens. Killed an orc and a vault warden. And slightly damaged everything else. Oh, yeah, they're all mited. That's why. Hmm. What to do? Let's summon some dudes. Hmm. Because there are no spellcasters here, that's, this is why I feel comfortable backing up, because... To kill the thing in front of me and to step forward requires two turns. Or, you know, at the very least, 1.7 turns or so, which means at most they get one hit in on me, and I don't believe he can kill me in one hit. So the fact that we're able to just sort of kite back through our meat shields here is really nice. Um, this harpy is not... My favorite thing. I really wanted to kill that so that we stand some chance of getting away. Gosh, that might is just... Let's heal ourselves. That seems pretty reasonable. Spend a turn reminding it to attack the orc instead of backing up to us. The, the summon AI in this game isn't always the best. I mean, they'll attack things that you are attacking openly. And some spells influence how the summons attack, but generally they just kind of flail around unless you tell them to hit something, which is a little frustrating. Okay, so what I think I want to do here is um, 
recast phase shift so that we get another few rounds out of that. Yeah, I figured the preserver was pretty close to being done, either via duration or via death. Because a bunch of mited dudes are really rough. These convokers have been casting might a lot more frequently than I'm used to, or maybe I'm just used to being able to kill the convokers before they can do much damage. Um, I think we can spend a turn... Can we spend a turn on regeneration? Should we spend a turn on regeneration? I don't know that it's the, the incremental benefit will be worth it. I think we're going to be taking a lot of damage rapidly. So I think probably nuking them down is a better choice. Hmm. That didn't do a whole ton of damage, did it? We don't have many good escapes at this point. Let's try slouching again. I feel like that first one was a little bit weak. I think one more would actually get most of these to the point where they're either dead or will die with one cast. The reason why I'm a little hesitant to do it is because of piety loss, but... Okay, good. We didn't get to the point where our bonuses were reduced any. Though we'll want to avoid using any of the Chabriado's abilities for a while. Yeah, the, the reason why I'm okay with this stone giant throwing rocks at us is because between deflect missiles and our shield, which is reasonable, in fact, it's already gained a point somehow. Maybe it's scaling incrementally with shields? I feel like that's odd. Maybe not, but ooh. Yeah, we did ha eventually have to close with him, and that was pretty painful, but... We're fine. Deep Elf Knight is not problematic. Oh, I suppose we could clear out... Um, we could clear out Elf 3 as well. I may do that after this level of the vaults. Alright, let's pick up this great base. Where did those guys come from? I know they weren't there a few minutes ago. Yeah, just blast them down. Iron Shot's a really strong spell. What's its spell power at this point? Only two pips from max? Yeah. It's doing a lot of damage. With the Convoker down, I'm... Oh, there was another one? Oh, no, that's a Warden. That's fine. Yeah, I think this mace is doing more damage than our old mace. Well, clearly it's doing more damage. It statistically will do more damage, but I think we're hitting more frequently with it, is, is what I mean to say. It is more effective for us than our old mace. And I haven't noticed a huge difference in the armor class drop yet. Really what we would like is a, a magical buckler of some sort. I don't even need an artifact. I'll settle for just any any ego on a buckler. Any good ego. And by that I mean anything aside from just like it being cursed. Picking up these great maces, partly so we can test them out at some point, partly so that nobody uses them against us. Orcs are just popcorn at this point. Except for orc warlords, which are a huge step above the rest. I mean, even orc sorcerers and orc... Basically anything but orc warlords can't do too terribly much to us. Man, the fact that we don't have C invisible yet, any source at all... Yeah. It's kind of frustrating. And a little unusual. Normally we get at least one source. Attack that guy. Um, okay, yeah, there we go. 
generally monsters will move in a straight line towards you. Not always, but generally. So if a monster goes invisible, the best thing you can do is... I mean, unless you are really familiar with the pathing in this game, with the AI pathing, the best thing you can do is to surround yourself so there's only one straight path to you. But, you know, that's not always possible. And it's certainly not always necessary. Good. Fighting up 16. The, the nice thing about fighting is, in addition to increasing our hit points, it also is slightly increasing the effectiveness of our mace as time goes by. Uh, which is, you know, uh, just a cherry on top. Like, we, we would be training fighting even if it was only a hit point boost. But the fact that it gives us an, a little bit of additional damage and accuracy is just fine. Just fine. Okay, let's keep exploring this huge, annoying hallway. Duck into this room here. Hmm. I guess these are the rooms that contain the monsters called by that convoker. Make him come to us. Be thankful that he did not sticky flame us. That's nice. Took an extra step there, which was stupid. That was just poor, poor um, game awareness on my part. There, I intended to take a step because Yaktars are really hesitant to close with you, unless you have somehow prevented them from shooting at you, which is difficult to do. Preserver by itself isn't that hard. They, they split damage with your other foes, so it's... I, I don't know what this split is exactly, but it's enough to be a little bit annoying. They're usually pretty tough, too. Let's just... yeah, there we go. <laughs> I became impatient. We were clearly having difficulties getting through his defenses. Ogres, not too concerned about. Our evasion is good enough that they can't really do much to us. See, our deflect missiles lasted forever. That was the same deflect missiles that we had at the start of this video. Okay, it is going down with spellcasting, so spell failure rate is tied to spellcasting. Great. Awesome. That means we don't have to put any more points into charms, because we do want to continue training spellcasting indefinitely. We are going to want the spell levels, at the very least. Since we want to be able to do the extended endgame with this character. That's that's my goal. Hall of Blades is removed in 0.15, which is great. Ow. Iron Shot? Two can play that game, buddy. There we go. That longsword was pretty tough. I feel like it's really difficult to hit those animated weapons. Yeah, the Hall of Blades is... Maybe at, in a previous version long, long ago it was entertaining and useful, but now it's just kind of a pain. I mean, generally there aren't going to be any weapons in there that are actually worth using, so it's just a little bit of experience floating around. And even then, it's not always worth it, because there's often a weapon or two of draining in there, which just drains you down, and then you have to kill other stuff to get your skills back up, and oh, we, we, we have been marked. Fortunately, we've cleared most of this level, so I don't think it will be fatal, but we do need some allies for this. What the mark does is it alerts everything on the level as to where you are, and so they all swarm you, which is just tons of fun. Oh, well that was the end of a little... Hmm. We're not going to be able to get to him before he finishes his word of recall. So we're going to have to deal with a bunch of guys. 
I did want to move forward there, though, just so we can hopefully get off a couple of spells before it gets out of hand. Not too worried about the Orcish Priest there. Let's get some friends. Yeah. Yeah. I think we can melee for a little bit. Our, our Orc Knight is taking quite the beating. I think, yeah, we're, we're hitting five guys with our Bolt of Magma. I think that's a, an efficient use of our mana. Yeah, that was, that was really good. Though, huh, it didn't appear to damage the, any other... Oh, I guess it killed the Centaur Warrior. Hmm, didn't really injure the Convokers any, though. So the question is, what do we want to do with our last spell here? Probably Phase Shift. Seems good. And the rest, probably the rest of the monsters on the level. More words of recall. These are all going to be mited soon. Hmm. I think our best bet at this point... Wow, especially since now we have all those guys... Uh, that Deep Elf Priest is the only thing that's really going to cause us a lot of problems, because um, he can just sit in the back there and smite us. I mean, we could actually probably deal with all of these monsters eventually, though probably our best bet is still to just read one of these scrolls of teleportation. Yeah. I think getting at it, we're not in danger of dying now that we've read this scroll, I don't think. But uh, we're, we're going to just play it safe and not sit here and eat smites and mighted attacks. We've cleared most of the level, I think, so we should be good as far as that goes. Um, question is, with this five mana, I, I kind of want to slouch. Yeah... Kill the harpies. I guess that was it, but... Alright. And we'll eat these chocos. Alright. Close this door, just so we have some idea of when things are sneaking up on us. Probably the entire rest of the level is going to be empty. Let's see. Is there a... Yeah, there's another room over there. Okay. Yeah, the Convokers don't strictly summon things. As far as this game defines summoning, they just pull things from elsewhere on the level as if they were summoned creatures, and it was casting the Recall spell. Or Recall, however you want to pronounce it. Kill him. Uh, good. Managed to get him before he finished his chant. The, the reason why Chabritos is a little tricky, I mean, aside from the obvious, is that after you play the game for a little while, you begin to sort of intuit how long it takes things to reach you and what sort of pathing they use. Uh, Ooh, we miscast. That's no bueno. Let's try it again. Yikes. Two miscasts in a row. That's unlucky. There we go. Cost us some hunger, a significant amount of hunger. Do we still have... Oh, well, I guess it's a little bit less than it used to be, but it's still not great. Um, let's cast Phase Shift. Okay, 
I feel safe now walking towards these guys. There we go. Run into this room here, willy-nilly. Uh, the reason why I feel safe doing that is because I'm pretty sure that those convokers down below, when we were surrounded, summoned every other monster on the level to them. Unless there are some in this water here. Nope. Okay. Don't mind that. That was just uh, one of my alarms reminding me to eat. I forget frequently. But I have already eaten. I did not forget today. Ah, curses. Well, that's fine. These guys are not strong. Ogre Magi uh, are, you know, annoying, but we're not in any real danger here. I mean, we're, at, we're surrounded by stuff that can't even really hurt us, so... Oh, man, these Convokers are just... Give me a rough time. Haha, <laughs> that's actually exactly what I wanted to happen. I wanted it to miss the skeleton and hit the convoker, but I didn't think it would actually work that way. It did, though. That's neat. Let's get some allies. Ooh, a boulder beetle. That's good. Hmm. Attack the priest. I don't know what you're doing, boulder beetle, but... You are whatever it is. You're not attacking the priest, so oh, there's something attacking us from there. Okay, frost giant simulacrum is worth caution, but without the ability to cast bolt of cold, I'm not too worried. Is the boulder beetle even attacking things? Yes, he is. Okay, good. He's just not very good at it, it seems. There we go. Good boulder beetle. I don't know if you're able to tell, but we are sort of at the limit of our melee ability. Oh. That was... Uh... ZG, not ZH. That's unfortunate. Maybe it's better to kill this troll. I think it's stronger than the Shadow Dragon Skeleton. Not sure about that one. It's at least attacking us more frequently, so... Skeletons generally are less powerful than their living counterparts. I can't think of too many instances where that's not the case. Maybe if you're relying on pain as your only source of damage, requires it to be living to... Hello, Ogre Mage. Ah, jeez, another misclick there. I guess I'm still getting used to this keyboard. Well, Ogre Mage, not scary. Uh, getting there with our shields. I wonder if it's worth focusing. I don't know. I feel like we're a little behind in our damage dealing capabilities, except for Iron Shot, which is short range. Um, but I really like blocking things. Blocking is just really good. Saves you a lot of damage. I mean, I place damage reduction at a premium because uh, we have so few hit points. I mean, the, the obviously straight-up hit point increases are going to be better for us than damage reduction because even reduced damage is still a, going to be a greater percentage of our hit points than if we just increase our hit points. Um but they kind of scale off each other. I mean, the, the if you have a, a huge, huge amount of hit points, then damage reduction is better. 
because it increases your effective hit point level by a larger amount. Uh, and if you have a ton of damage reduction, then increasing your hit points is better because, again, it increases your effective hit points by a larger amount. Effective hit points being your actual hit points. Um, let's actually on purpose abjure these things this time. Boggarts are pretty scary unless you have this aura of abjuration. They just summon a lot of really strong critters. Oh, there's something invisible there. Holding down control here so that we uh, don't move accidentally. There we go. Pretty sure we've killed all the boggarts now. Not being able to see invisible is pretty frustrating, although we do finally have a scroll of fog. Can't believe that we didn't have either a scroll of fog or <laughs> see invisible this whole time. So uh, fog uh, will... It's sort of a poor man's see invisible um, because things moving through the cloud of fog will reveal their location. It doesn't make it all that much easier for you to hit it, but it does let you know where it is, so you're not just flailing around. Yeah, boulder beetles, even, even if you're super slow like we are, you can still dodge them. They just roll in a straight line until they hit something, such as a wall or you. Try not to let it be you. It hurts. Kind of like an orb of destruction. The orbs of destruction keep homing if you dodge them, so you have to dodge them a couple of times. Spriggans don't mind orbs of destruction. You can just dodge those all day long. But we have to be a little more careful since... In fact, I don't know that we even have the capability of dodging orbs of destruction. They might just be too fast for us. They're slow, but that still might... I mean, we're, we are also really slow. Wow, three Scrolls of Enchant Weapon, too. We have a bunch of Scrolls of Enchant Weapon. Um, looks like we are more or less done with this level. Still a few monsters wandering about that we can just sort of clean up here. Yeah. So I'll go back to the stash and the video, and I think next time we're going to clear out Elf. I think that's going to give us some good magical, well, good magical stuff. I was going to say equipment, but it's not necessarily going to be equipment. It may be spellbooks, scrolls, other, um, other accessories. Let's try out this, uh, these maces, though. Oh, right, we are wielding a cursed. I guess our scroll of remove curse was burned. That's disappointing. Really low on scrolls of remove curse this game. Really low on scrolls in general, I feel. Maybe not. Maybe it's just that we've used a whole bunch of them. Okay, let's hope neither of these are cursed. He says, wielding a cursed mace. Well, that means we really have to just burn a scroll of identify on this other one. Yeah, great mace of protection. And... Okay. There's a three charge, or a three time scroll. That feature is being removed in the next patch, and I'm okay with that. More things identify on uh, upon wearing them or wielding them. I think all jewelry now identifies when you wear it, instead of only some. I am done with the substantive part of this video, by the way. It's just stashed up from here on out. So uh, thanks for watching, regardless, if you stick around. I will not be offended if you leave. Okay. Uh, um, so, plus zero, plus zero, great mace of protection. We could, in theory, boost that up. I mean, it's... Base damage is 17, which is great. Three more base damage than we have with our enchanted, you know, with our artifact mace here. 
but we'd prob probably have to rebrand it for it to be really useful, and we'd have to dump a bunch of scrolls into it, and that's just... I don't know. Maybe okay, actually? Since we're not liable to wield anything else. I, I guess a good evening star would be better than a great mace. Any kind of evening star, in fact. Yeah, I'll hold out for an evening star. Evening stars are like morning stars, but better. They're uh, minus 2 or 3 accuracy, but plus 15 damage. Or 15 base damage, rather. It's only 2 shy of a great mace, and it's one-handed, so we can use it with our shield. Yeah, I just can't foresee us getting rid of shields anytime soon, especially since we're training it up. I shouldn't have even experimented by wielding those maces. I just... I don't know. On the off chance that one of them was really cool. How's our shields coming along? Oh, right, we need to... You can't train shields unless you're wearing a shield, which is a little frustrating. But, I mean, it makes sense. Interestingly, races that can't wear body armor cannot train the armor skill. So Draconians, Octopodes, Felids. I think that's it. Because even robes technically benefit from the armor skill, although it's minuscule. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, I've, I've, yeah, getting our shields up. I mean, we, we already, even just with this buckler, our, our training so far has already boosted our shields uh, a, a stat by two points, which is a significant increase, as low as it is. And by the time we get it up to 15, that'll increase by probably another five points, I would guess, for a buckler. And then when we put on a regular shield, it will increase significantly. Let's, um, let's see how much it is. Yeah, 30. So 11 more by switching to a, a real shield. But as you can see, our spellcasting becomes prohibitively difficult prior to us having 15 in our shield skill. There are a few races that have an easier time with it. Uh, Nagas, for example, uh, races with large torsos need um, 3, 8, 15, I believe, for bucklers, normal shields, and large shields, respectively, to uh, suffer no melee or spellcasting penalty. Whereas uh, normal-sized races take 5, 15, and 20, or maybe it's 25 even, and small races such as Spriggans can't even wear large shields, and it's something like 10, 20, or something crazy like that. It takes a lot more. Still usually worth it if you're a caster of some sort. Um, anything else? Can we still only have five spell levels? Not too close to the next spell casting level. What kind of potions are we working with here? Uh, one extra heal wounds, that's kind of nice. Ton of curing, that's good. Curing has kind of a weird usefulness curve. It's super early, or it's super good early in the game when you don't have many hit points, and so a potion of curing is basically equivalent to a potion of heal wounds. And also poison for many races is a, a much more dangerous thing in the early game, and it gets rid of that. And then it's not useful for most of the mid-game, and then it spikes up again in the late game when things are able to confuse you pretty frequently. Because Potions of Curing also cure confusion, which is great. Gets you out of many a sticky spot. Yeah, I think as soon as we find an Evening Star, we have, we have 9 Enchant 1 and 10 Enchant 2. We only have 1 Enchant 3, but that's fine. We have 2 Scrolls of Branding, so we can play the Brand Roulette. Though, we, I mean, it's most likely to be Fire or Frost anyway. Those are the two most common brands, I believe. I mean, just from the random generator. With Electrocution and Draining being slightly less common than that. I think maybe Vorpal is in there somewhere. I don't know. But certainly with the branding scrolls, it's about a 
30% chance each for fire and frost, which is fine. I mean, 15 base damage is enough to make good use of the those two brands which scale off of the base damage. Up to 50% additional damage. Up to 50% additional fire or frost damage from the base damage. I don't believe it scales with the enchantment level. Um, and up to double damage on things that are vulnerable and only 25% or, you know, decreasingly decreasing damage to things that are resistant. I'm not sure of the exact numbers, but I mean, at that point, you're, you're just relying on your base damage anyway. The nice thing about Fire and Frost as, as melee weapon brands, as opposed to a brand on a bow or a stack of arrows, is that with a ranged weapon, it the, the entirety of the damage that the projectile deals is transformed into that elemental damage. So if you're up against something that's immune to fire and you have a bow of flame, and that's the only source of range damage you're using, like if you're a hunter or something, then you're out of luck. Oh, we do have two scrolls of fog. I guess we just didn't have them on us earlier. Uh, we want to... Let's see. We want to pick up some of these scrolls of teleportation, for sure. Um, let's say two of them. Yeah, three seems good. Hopefully at some point we'll find a wand and we can stop with that. Uh, we also want to pick up one scroll of recharging. Good, we have eight of those. We have conserved those nicely. Partly because we haven't put any points into evocations, and so we have no need to drop, or to, uh, to recharge most of the wands, because they're just kind of throwaway things. However, Wand of Heal Wounds is a static amount. It's not... it doesn't scale off of evocations. It's just a set, like, 1d whatever plus 9 or something. I think it's between 10 and 30-ish, maybe between 10 and 35, that it will heal. So we're, we're sort of at the boundary, I mean, with an average of about 20. We're kind of at the boundary of its usefulness right now as an in-combat tool. As you could see in the in the vaults there, things were hitting us occasionally for 30-plus points of damage in a single hit. Which, you know, is means that if we are just healing ourselves every turn and something's hitting us for around 30 damage every turn, we're eventually going to lose that that war of attrition. We'd have to rely upon a, a good block or a good miss on their part. Um, you know, a good block, a good dodge, a good reduction from our armor before we are able to actually get a net gain of health points. And usually if we're in that situation, we're fighting more than one enemy anyway. There aren't going to be too many enemies really from this point forward, that can kill us one-on-one. -on -one. Orbs of Fire are one. They can still kill us easily. I mean, we're nowhere near being able to take on an Orb of Fire. Although having two pips of fire resistance is a good start. We'd need 50 more hit points to comfortably take on an Orb of Fire, plus a source of mutation resistance. But, I mean, shy of stuff in the realm of Zot, not too much can kill us one-on-one. -on -one. Maybe Titans, if they get a few lucky hits in. But we, we just have a ton of resources at our disposal. It's, it's just when we get surrounded by a bunch of guys, we're out of mana from casting a bunch of spells. Though our mana is, is progressing reasonably well, scaling off of our spell casting here. Uh, yeah. Spell casting and, and experience level, I think it's... Oh, I don't know. One or two mana points per level, and some multiplicative number of points per level of spell casting, like 2.5 or something. I don't know. I don't know. But regardless, that's one of the many reasons why we're leaving spell casting on for the entire rest of the game, basically, until it's. I mean, maybe we'll turn it off when it gets to, like, level 25 or something, but I, there's no reason to ever turn it off. Uh, just higher levels of spellcasting means more spells cast. So it, you know, it, it's basically... 
it's scaling up a lot of things uh, sort of behind the scenes. There, there's a lot of hidden scaling to spellcasting uh, because it, it influences so many things. So, for example, it's making our spells easier to cast. This means that we need fewer skill levels in an individual spell school to cast each of these spells. So one advantage of putting points into it is that, for example, this Deflect Missiles will eventually become much, much easier to cast without us having to train charms or air magic any further. Uh, it additionally provides us with um, a reduction in spell hunger, so, you know, soon, relatively soon, within another four levels of spell casting, these will become free. Most of our spells are already free. Of course, Iron Shot, our most powerful, is still a few of these. But, I mean, these used to be, uh, just a little while ago, these were four pips of hunger cost instead of two. Um, and so, so that's another sort of hidden, I mean, not so hidden benefit. It's pretty easy to tell when that happens. Um, what else? Oh, it increases our mana, so that means, I mean, that means we can cast more spells, we can use more Chabrito's abilities. Um, it takes longer for us to become vulnerable to mana vipers. Just having a lot of mana is really good. Um, and I believe it also contributes to spell power. Fairly certain. It's not a it's not a strong contribution. It contributes about as much to spell power as fighting does to damage. Uh, obviously not exactly the same ratio, but it's it's somewhat analogous. So you can kind of rely on again incremental increase in your spell effectiveness, which we're 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 doing quite well. Iron Shot is getting there. We could always put more points into Earth Magic. Uh, and we probably will at some point. In fact, we definitely will, because presumably at some point in the game we will have access to Shatter, which is the, um, the level 9 Earth Magic spell, the big bad boom boom. And it's I've never actually cast it, so I don't know how good it really is. I know it was tweaked fairly recently. The, the Shatter and um, Flash Freeze or Deep Freeze or what, whatever the, the ultimate ice magic spell is, the level 9 ice magic spell, those were both tweaked within the past couple of patches. They both used to be just strictly inferior to Firestorm and Tornado respectively. Like, you would always want to go fire magic and air magic, because Tornado plus Firestorm was just so insanely strong. And it still is, I mean, it's still insanely strong, but it was just so much stronger than Shatter plus Deep Freeze. Or, it used to be Ice Storm. That's, that's, that was the change with Ice Magic. Uh, Ice Storm was basically a worse Firestorm. It, um, it dealt a little bit more physical damage, so it dealt a little bit more damage to creatures immune to ice, or immune to cold, and there are also fewer enemies in the endgame, post-endgame, that have immunity or high resistance to cold. So, you, you know, you would do more effective damage per cast, in theory. The problem is it was a, the... the, the area of effect was much smaller than Firestorm. At least one tile, maybe two. And it was beam-targeted instead of smite-targeted. Firestorm is smite-targeted. You can just cast it behind enemy lines and just nuke down, just rain death upon any, you know, caster critters like ancient liches or priests or things that are being obnoxious from behind the meat shields in front of them. Uh, and Firestorm also does unblockable, irresistible physical damage. Uh, something like 30, like a third or 40% of its damage is irresistible. So still, you know, reasonable damage, considering that it's just an just obscene, obscene amount of damage. Like, uh, I don't know. I can I can look it up real quick, actually, for you. Um, hopefully this does not cause an error in the recording. I don't believe it will. And I'm also not sure if you can see what I'm doing. 
I will check that out. I, I have a slightly different setup here than I, um, than I did a, than I do on my other computer. Uh, yeah, it's um, hmm. eight d five plus spell power divided by eight. Okay, so at max spell power. Yeah, it, it's, it deals 45% of its max damage guaranteed, and it can do up to 208 damage per turn, which is insane. Absolutely insane. And we can also use it to... I mean, you can use it to... In, in all kinds of situations, you can, you can sort of cast it, like, at a corner or sort of around a corner almost, and it'll you know, expand to be behind a wall. For example, if we cast it here, it would expand to be, you know, over here. So you can kill stuff that's behind, that's out of your line of sight, which is a really, really cool effect. It's very rare. Not many things can do that. Um, and, yeah, so Firestorm is amazing. And Ice Storm used to be strictly worse. That's basically what this, you know, I've been saying for the past three minutes. But it was replaced, the, the ice magic, ultimate ice magic spell was replaced with Deep Freeze or something like that, which it, it damages and slows everything in your line of sight, I think. Which is kind of neat. And Shatter has a somewhat similar effect. I don't remember exactly what they do, and I'm not going to take the time to look them all up. I'll look them up between videos and refresh my memory, but they seem to be much better. Shatter used to be just kind of bad, uh, sort of situational, but I, I think they're both better now, and maybe they're even stronger next patch. I don't know, but uh, regardless, um, I've been rambling on here, sitting in the stash for long enough, so I think I will let you go. Um, thanks for watching, uh, those of you that have stuck around for these last few minutes. It's um, it's always fun sort of explaining the mechanics of this game. It's it's one of the reasons why I play it. It's just it's a very cool, very complex system, and I like figuring that sort of thing out. And helping you figure it out, too, so that you, too, may ascend with the Orb of Sot. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.